Hey everyone, it's Mark Ling here. And would you believe that you can earn huge affiliate commissions in crazy niches out there? Like personally, I've been doing well in things like language learning, learn guitar, um, dog training, personal development, um, alternative beliefs, and, and many others. But I've got a friend of mine today called Vernon, who is doing extremely well in another kitschy little niche for people that are interested in coffee alternatives. I mean, isn't that crazy? Like, there's so many profitable niches out there. So without further ado, we're going to get some tips from him today and so forth. Without further ado, I want to introduce you guys to Vernon. Welcome along. Thanks you for having me, Mark. Welcome, everybody. Thank nice to meet everyone, virtually. It's great to have you here. Now, now, first of all, before I ask you sort of like how you got into this stuff, I want to know, was coffee alternatives like your first niche or did you actually test out a few niches and then this one just happened to take off first so you went ahead and went double down triple down let me start off with the truth <laughs> that yeah. I, it was honestly it was almost like throwing darts at the board um because i wasn't quite sure where to start and i was looking around and it was literally something i had in my cabinet and so i was like okay and i realized that was a niche and that's i mean i wish i had ah, a better so you have coffee alternatives yourself so then you thought Maybe there's a niche there. Maybe there's an affiliate program for something like that that I'm already interested in. Yeah, start with what you know, right? I mean, it just made sense to me. That That's brilliant. That, I, I think that's fantastic. A lot of people don't always think down those lines. They often look for what's the highest selling product and stuff yep. like that. But the truth is there are thousands of them. I mean, I've done well in daycare management software for people that run home daycare centers for eight to 16 kids. There's the kitschiest of little niches are out there. And then there's the bigger yep. niches. You either become a, a rather big fish in a small pond or you become a little fish in a big pond. Either way, there's a lot to be made. And you do it all through free traffic or mostly free traffic, or is it a bit of both? All free. I have not paid for one ounce of no no paid media. Okay. So when we say free traffic, we, we know that your time is worth money. So just so people mm -hmm. know, we don't mean free as in two seconds and you've got all this free traffic. It's it's not quite like that. You you put a bit of hard work in, but then that traffic is very hard to turn off. So you could go on holiday and come back and still find yep. that you've got the same number of visitors coming in every day to your website. But that's what we mean by free traffic. You kind of set up a good system going and then it's just coming naturally. Free traffic could come from the search engines for some people. For some people exactly. it's from YouTube videos. I get thousands of visitors a day off YouTube videos from Google, but then there's some people are so good at social media that they're just getting it all from Instagram or from um, Facebook and people following their Facebook page or their Facebook group or so, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. So free traffic can take a lot of means where you don't have to fork out money to pay for that traffic, but you do have exactly. to um, get some quality content out there and so forth in some way, shape or form. Mm -hmm. um, so how did you get underway with this stuff? Like what made you even decide, hey, I'm going to start and, and, and what kind of sales are you making? You're making a lot of sales per day. Um, what, what sort of like, just so people know, like, hey, is this something that you're, you're in the middle of growing? You've just started. You're, you're, you're actually like already ramped it up. And like, where are you at with it? So, you know, I can answer this. Uh, I was looking at my stats actually a little bit earlier. So I'm about 10 sales. I think conservatively, I say about 10 sales on average a day. Um, but Great. I, I want to say I'm right in the middle of it. It's because... As you are, as I've been doing this, I just noticed I made a tweak here and then things went up. And so I, I kind of want to say I'm in the middle because I'm always looking to make things better. But right now I'm about 10 sales a day on average. Oh, that's great. And what sort of commissions do you get paid um, for each sale, like for that kind of niche? I know every niche is different. Some niches will, yeah. there's a product, they'll pay 50 bucks. Some will be 20. I'm, I'm not really sure in this niche. For this particular one, they have a couple of upsells, but we're talking about on average, looking at the average is about $75. So $75 a sale. That's awesome. Because some people might have been thinking, hey, are you just promoting these on Amazon and getting 4 or 5% commission and getting $5 a sale? And you're saying 10 sales a day at $75 a commission. So that's, that's amazing. That's like a lot of people would be happy with that in a week, at least when they're mm -hmm. starting out. That's, you know, really, really inspiring. And, um, and do you like have tips for people if they were searching for a niche for themselves, like what kind of niche to look for and how to go about finding those niches? I think one of the tips um, is one thing we talked about earlier, look around. If there's anything I can say, look around at what you already have in your house, what you're already using, what you're already a customer for. 
Um, that's mm -hmm. definitely a big tip um, because, you know, kind of going to the second tip as I think about it, there are products, and I found this by even looking around my house and what I was looking at, they're looking for people to promote their products, but no one knows about them, right? And so mm -hmm. if you can get in on the floor right when they're getting started or before anybody knows a lot about them, they will make they can be more willing to make things happen for you. And that's what I can say what's happened in my case. That, you know, that's um, awesome. And and I forgot to go back to listen to your answer to this other question. Um, what got you started in this in the first place? And what were you doing yeah. before this? So before this, I had an online business. Um, and I was doing coaching. But I think the thing that I was really looking for is, it's when you're coaching, it's not 100% you have always coaching, always speaking and things like that. I just wanted additional income. Um, and I initially started this as kind of like a side project. Let me just see. Right. And so it was just me being curious and me having the time. Cool. So what, what were you coaching in? Like, cause you must've had a skill set there. So my thing is happiness coaching and it's about showing our entrepreneurs how to be happy, how to focus on the happy. That's brilliant. And I know, I know that's a big niche area. That is another niche that I have actually done pretty well in over the years as an affiliate. What I've found is um, I've got one of my niche areas is in the alternative beliefs areas like affirmations mm -hmm. and uh, self-hypnosis and stuff like that. And once every six months or so, we promote a product that's all on how to be happy, but also self-hypnosis tracks on how to be happy. And they sell like crazy. People oh, yeah. want to be happier that is one big area that everyone wants to be happier and if you have a good product that actually genuinely gets results with people yep. then and they get more out of themselves and they live their purpose and they, yeah, they'll buy it they'll pay money for that so i see why that was a good niche to be in but um like you said like you know, if it's you doing all the coaching that was obviously more time intensive and in yep. that you, you're not earning if you're not coaching i guess because you said it was coaching it wasn't like you're selling a a course then like a membership site, it was a, you were a one-on-one -on -one coach, were you? Right. And, and honestly, is what you were saying, if I'm not working, if I'm not coaching, income's not coming in. Right. And so it just yeah. makes sense why I even kind of looked into this area. Right. So I tell you, now that you know how to sell the coffee stuff, you could literally record yourself, make a course and sell the happiness stuff without people having to be there like it'd be a lower price because it's they're not having you one-on-one -on -one, but just saying just just that just popped into my head and then guys like me could promote you as an affiliate and earn a commission and you've got your your course <laughs> you just made me really happy thank you mark <laughs> taking a note <laughs> no, on that I, mean, no, I, I know they sell i know it, it will sell if it's a good course and you've got results with people and it's a, yeah yep. anyway Sorry, we went off on a little tangent there, but that's how it happens in affiliate marketing. You do end up going off on little tangents. Some people say to me, are you too scatterbrained? And I'll say, yes, I am. I know that you can go better if you focus on one niche and you double down, you triple down, and you focus everything you can on that one niche. Absolutely. Yep. But I also embrace that I am a little scatterbrained and I can still make affiliate marketing work so well. Bingo. And I'm in the same boat. Yeah, because there's... I mean, a lot of um, people with retail stores have a lot of products in their store. Um, as an affiliate, you don't have to make each product, so you can promote any of them. You know, I can promote a horse racing product if I want to. I could promote a product on on anything in any niche. And yep. the the worst that happens for me is I set up a website and I get a trickle of visitors and I make the odd sale here and there if I didn't double down and really push that far enough. And But those sales still creep in throughout the year and then the next year and things still sort of sell and then the best that happens is you end up with this other source of income that's bringing in another thousand a week or a few hundred a week and all these little exactly. tiny sources add up and then you have the odd one like yours where it does like you're doing like 750 a day like you mm -hmm. get the odd one like that and then you end up like having this big like quite a big decent decent income that's kind of hard to shut off um so Discovering the free traffic method. I know that you you obviously came across um, Jason and Donathan. Um, Donathan, and what in there is the key for you? Like that made things work. Like um, you don't have to give away all the best secrets, but if you could give somebody a tip, if they were starting out as an affiliate, let's say they knew how to get a website online, like mm -hmm. Uh, what would you say to them? I'll, I'll make up a niche for you so it's a little bit easier. Let's say that they were promoting um, body wraps because that's a niche I've made a bunch of sales in, like body mm -hmm. wraps. Like you wrap 
like you put certain body wraps on, you put sort of minerals in it and stuff, and you wear it for a certain amount of time per day, and it and it and it helps you with weight loss and stuff. Like, let's say they were selling body wraps. Like, what would you do? What would you say to them as as any tips you'd have? First thing, you have to be a customer. If there's one tip that I would recommend strongly, um, it's I would want to buy the product because I would want to see and feel what it's like. Um, and even if for me, it's about understanding because it changes the way that you can, you understand the way that consumers purchase once you become the customer yourself. You're like, oh, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. um, and the next thing I would do is think about that process when you're buying anything. What do you do? You know, are you a researcher? Are you do you um, are you the type of person who goes to the website and does a you know check their dimensions? Are you the type of person who asks people and understand how people can start pursuing you know the product that you're purchasing, and you know really let, apply that to every step that you're doing along the way as well because it does help with the way you talk about the product. Mm. Um, because that's, a, it, yeah, it, that's it, a really good point, um, and. If for some reason you are not the target market for any product, mm -hmm. um, you, you just got to go ahead and get on all of those sites where people, buyers are congregating and read and really get to know them. You have to take a huge interest in that market. So for instance, you could go on Amazon and look at all the customer reviews of all the body yep. wraps products. You might not be promoting an Amazon body wraps product. It might be on another site that pays you $50 commission, but you're going to, if you read all of the positive and negative reviews of body wraps products, say on Amazon, you'll start to get a feel for, oh, that's what they were looking for. That's exactly. why they got it. And you, you get to know the market, um, but it can help even more if you already are the market. I, I like your tip there because then it's so much easier to get into that mindset, isn't it? If you already are a consumer of that product. Yeah. You, you know, think about, um, you know, let's just say you have a, a, a beverage that maybe you're promoting. There's things that you would think about if you're the person who drinks, if you're the actual consumer of that product, you're going to think mm -hmm. about, oh, um, is it fizzy? Does it, you know, pour it into, the, you know, does it have a certain smell? There's little aspects that people can pick up on that they won't even be conscious mm -hmm. of that help with like conversions or help you understand why they buy. Yeah, no, absolutely. It, it's like, say, let's say you enter the dog training niche and you heard it, it's a really big niche, but you don't have a dog. So you may not think about, Something like, I, I don't know, um, you, you'll know you, people want to know how to stop dogs from barking, but you may not word it in the right way where it's like, right. you know, never be, ne you know, imagine never having to rush outside and um, at night when you've let your dog out for a pee and they've suddenly started barking at the neighbor's cat. Imagine that never being an embarrassing <laughs> scenario for you again. Um, you know, it's just stuff like that. Like there's, there's lots of little little things that um you know if you own a dog or you are in that situation that um you know can make such a dramatic difference so yeah i think that's that's great advice there um and and that can help you with your keyword research too if you're trying to rank in the search yeah. engines and i know you do um actually the long people like to use keyword research tools but the problem is there are a lot of phrases out there that don't even enter the keyword research tools because they might only list all the ones that have, say, on average, every month has 100 searches for it or something, right. or 50 or whatever. There are so many search phrases that get searched for 50 to 100 times that never enter those keyword research tools. These are the kind of phrases. It may not be as simple as stop dog barking at cat, but it, <laughs> even a phrase like that, even if it's in there, it's probably not a very... Um, it's not a saturated phrase. It's probably a phrase that it's not that hard to rank for, say, right? because um, it's longer. And what are your thoughts, though? Are you finding that you're getting a lot of traffic from long tail phrases? Long tail, hands like... down. I'm sorry, I cut you off. But... No, 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 you're right. I want to listen to you. Get your tips. Uh, long tail has been my bread and butter. Um, it's what you're saying. When people are in a particular need, right? They might not say, well, a dog barking at cat. They might say, dog keeps me up all night long. What can I do? Right. And it's those long tail phrases that people use in language have been my bread and butter, hands down. Right. So, yeah. So you don't have to be ranking at all for dog training, say, if you're in the dog training niche or for coffee alternatives. It's wonderful if you do. And you might be mm -hmm. making, you might be making 75,000 a day if you're ranking number one for coffee alternatives. So, but, but, there's a lot to be made from 
all of those long tail phrases, they add up. I mean, imagine if there was a curve and then the most highly searched for term is right there. And yes, if you ranked for that, you'd get so much of the benefit just from those few phrases. But yep. if you rank for a ton of these phrases here, you can get a lot of visitors to your site. Yes, you can. And, um, and, and how long did it take you from starting that site to see your first sale? Because you've got to be patient a bit with um, free traffic. It, 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 I want to say you got, I did have, I was patient, but we're talking a little bit over two months. And that's with mm. starting and getting to this kind of place where I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel like, you know, commissions are starting to come in continuously. Um, I got traffic pretty quickly. Fantastic. I, I, I think that's awesome. Um, yeah, like that's pretty much what, what I found as well. But for me, it was um, around about two months into using their system because I've been testing their system as well that it started seeing the first sales and now it's sort of scaled up into thousands of dollars. But awesome. definitely, you've got to be patient. And I think that's the big difference in search marketing from paid traffic. If you've got no patience, you have to do paid traffic because then you can see instantly, does that convert, does it not, and all of that stuff because you can buy the traffic, okay? But if you don't, if you are willing to be really patient and implement a plan and be willing to see delayed mm -hmm. gratification for what you've done, then free traffic can be super awesome. Um, to me, I, I feel like, why don't you do both anyway? Um, <laughs> Long-term anyway, you know? Yeah. Like, because some, for some people, and for me, when I promote something, whether it be paid traffic or free traffic first, quite often I end up doing the other anyway. So paid traffic, this thing's selling really well. And then I go, okay, I need to invest some of the money into free traffic now. I know it's when I say invest money, I mean pay one of my staff to do all the free traffic stuff, right? right. I could be doing it myself, but, you know. Um, or if I'm getting free traffic and it's converting well, then I go, I just want to test if buying traffic to this will also convert well now, yes or no. It's worth a test, you know? Yep. Um, so it's not essential, but I'm just saying like quite often they both go together. It's not always a one or the other decision. Um, so do you do other things outside of search traffic? Do you go and make a little community or a newsletter or anything like that to get repeat traffic and stuff like that with your, um, with your site now that it's doing well? Glad you asked. That's one of the things I've been experimenting with. I'm in the process of, yeah, well, I have a newsletter. I'm just in the process of collecting emails because not every person that comes to my site is going to purchase, right? But that could be still a potential to be able to grab someone up right then to try to talk to them later. But so I'm yeah. literally in the process of getting that set up. Oh, no, that that's brilliant. Yeah, because that for me, when I first started a newsletter on one of my sites back, this is a long time ago, like 20 years ago or something, because I've been online. I'd made over a million online at that point. I've been online for about four years. I started a newsletter. And 90 days later, I had doubled all my earnings from all my websites by having newsletters on there because certain nice. percentage of people, like, they would say sign up for, like, it, you'll figure out what they sign up for. Maybe it'll be a free health, health tips newsletter for your site or something else. And then you find yep. they either buy the original product the third time they've seen it or the fourth time, or they buy the next product you promote maybe three weeks into your sequence or, yep. you know, and... Uh, it was amazing. I, I was stunned. Two years into owning a newsletter, I found that when I did this um, report, I was checking over um, when people were buying. And I and I remember, I remember this, I checked nine months into the sequence of one of the sequences that was, it was starting to get 50 opt-ins a day. So it was quite a lot of opt-ins. Wow. So nine months into that sequence, people were still buying the products that were promoted at nine months. You know, and I'm not saying they weren't buying the products later. I just remember that was the specific time period. I was just quickly like having a check, like, what's this product? When's it promoted? Oh, it's <laughs> nine months in and I'm still making sales of that every week, you know? Yeah. And that's what made me think, geez, there's a lot, lot left on the table if you don't do that. So that's another way. People, good tip. It's a way to double pretty much. Whatever you're doing, you should, you'll, you'll probably find eventually you're doing double. Um, might just take, it takes time though. You might not see the results immediately. You might see it. Like I say, if all of those things take time to add up, like those later newsletters add up, then yep. um, then you know it can take a little while before you know that you're at double. Like it could be three months, six months, but um, yeah, like it sounds. I'm very excited for you. I think that sounds awesome. Thank you. I'm um, excited hearing what your results were. Like that's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Email, emails huge, and, and communities are huge today too. You know, you could easily at some point build a little Facebook group around it and stuff like that, and you know. 
um, exactly. yeah, it's pretty amazing what you can do. Um, but you can't do everything at once. It's just yep. one at a time, get it going, get it going well. And then you'd go, should I build another thing or should I double down on what I'm doing or should I do what I'm doing, but in another language, <laughs> like <just laughs> translate it and, you know, Spanish version of coffee alternatives, et cetera. Like so much, um, so much you can do. That's why when people ask me, is this saturated? I'm never worried about saturation because there's thousands of niches and there's mm -hmm. thousands of opportunities within those niches. It's personally, that's my personal take, but yep. Um, you may not have the same take. I don't know. Like, what's what's your take on all of that stuff? So, so far with saturation for me, um, it's what we were talking about the long tail keywords. I wasn't able to to really catch attention and to really get a lot more attention to get organic that free organic traffic until I really focused on those long tail keywords. And there was there's well, I'm not gonna say what the project is, but there's no one there, right? So it's mm. I'm going through the back door. So I'm a huge believer if it's saturated, that's when you just have to work a little differently. Um, mm. But I, I don't, if it yes, was there's, saturated. There's always, yes, there's, there's always yes and no to saturation, isn't there? Like, yeah, it's yes, not yes, it's saturated if you are thinking, write down the most obvious stuff right. in that niche. The most obvious areas of the niche, the biggest, giantest areas are always going to be more likely to be saturated. Yes, you are correct. But the there's just zillions of like stray hairs everywhere. That's, exactly. That, that's never saturated. But I do like to see, you know, kind of going with that first example of saturation, I do like to see a lot of competition because I know there's money there. Um, yeah. And it, it, that's how that's I true. look at it. So when I see that, I'm like, oh, this is going to be fun. Yeah. Um, that's but true. even w w with my product, it was coffee alternative. That's what, that was a lot of competition there. So it was like, ooh, this is this is sexy. I like this, but mm. I just had to think a little differently. But um, yeah, and it'd be interesting to see what other products they buy, um, because you may find other things that are not not a coffee alternative, but maybe some of the you might find out one day you do a survey and you find out that a third of them are diabetics or something like that, and then you go, ah, maybe maybe there's a there's um, a chocolate alternative or there's some other stuff that, or low sugar chocolate or something like all these other things that you can earn commissions on later in your list. You know, I think food items are going to be big for you, but so it could be, that's why I'm, but, but that's Sorry. why I'm so excited for the newsletter. There's things that I know yeah. that I'm going to find out of that people who, I mean, my thinking anyway, people who come to my site, they've got, I would imagine they have something in common. Right. And so mm. what if they are diabetic? What if they are, uh, 27 year old and, and looking for certain products that, you know, I can, you know, talk to them about through a newsletter. So that's what I'm excited about to see the opportunities. Well, what if they're struggling with sleep? That's why they want a coffee alternative. Exactly. But they will buy a self hypnosis track that helps them sleep the night. Like, cause I know our self hypnosis tracks on sleep, they sell well. So I know, you know, potentially that's a market, you know, I'm not saying you promote us. I'm just saying in general, like there's so many little subplots that could happen if you go that bit further with a newsletter. So that, that's pretty cool. That's a great, great um, thing that's coming up for you. Um, so yeah, looking forward to hearing how that goes. Appreciate um, that tip. <laughs> so so we, we've gone off on quite a tangent here. Uh, wasn't necessarily the intention, but that's what happens once you get going with the stuff. It's, uh, I find it fun and, and it sounds like you're having a ball doing it as well, Vernon, uh, the affiliate yeah. marketing stuff, the free traffic. Um, so what would you say to anybody that was interested in jumping on a workshop? Because I'm going to run a workshop with Donathon and Jason, the people that you learned the method from to do all this stuff. Yeah. I'm going to be running a free one. The link should be in the description below or below this video somewhere. Uh, what would you say to anyone that at this point they're, they're reasonably interested in joining that? You're going to see really quickly that you need to be there. Like you're going to be very happy. If there's anything that I can say um, to anybody who might be on the fence, it's not saturated. You're overthinking it. If there's anything that I have learned from doing this is I was overthinking it by so much. Keep it simple. And once you get on there, once you, you know, you see these guys, you'll understand that, wow, this is where I should be. This is where I need to be. And honestly, like this is the, that breath of fresh air I've been looking for. And um, they've got their own sort of secret stash of tools. I know a lot of people have AI and stuff, but theirs is calibrated 
to how they think and what their method is. So theirs is trained, they call it their AI brain or something mm -hmm. like that. It's basically trying to unload what how they think into the AI so that it writes like them, it researches like them, stuff like that. So there's a lot of automation in it. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously there's the human element as well, which you've been talking a lot about today, Vernon. And I think that's why you succeeded so quickly because you kind of merged a bit of both together, didn't you? You 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 did all your research yourself. Did you write all your articles yourself or did you use their system as well and do part part AI, part part you? Part AI, part me. So we kind right. of did yeah, the no, hybrid. That's good. Perfect, that's good to know. I'm just interested in that. Um, so, at the very least, I, I just highly recommend that you check it out. If you are somebody that oh, yeah. is at all interested in this, check it out. You may decide at the end of the workshop, you, you'll have three decisions. One, this is not for me, but I know what I'm saying no to. Two, this is for me, but I'm going to go off and do it myself. I, I get the gist of it now. They've taught me so much stuff. I think I can do this myself. Or three, I get it. I want their tools. I want their coaching. I want to go with them. I want to join their program. And, and some of you will want to join that as well. So there's three, you know, there's three ways of going about it. Either way, there's a lot of huge value for you guys being delivered on this particular workshop with this particular method. So I hope to see a lot of you guys there. Um, I want to say a big thank you to you, Vernon, for being on this call. You've been, you've been fantastic. Actually, we've done some great brainstorming together and, <laughs> um, and you're really inspiring what you've managed to achieve. And, I really think that you're going to make a difference to some people out there who are going to watch this and that's going to be the catalyst that gets them started. And I just want to say a big thank you for being here. Mark, I got to say thank you as well. There's so many opportunities out there, everybody. There's so many. Thank you, Mark, for having me here. All right, guys, take action with what you learn and see you next time. Bye for now, everyone.